river dance might be the face of Irish dancing, but to nearly 50,000 Americans, it isn't just for show. It's a sport and a way of life. Go dance it! Pick it up, pick it up! Athletes practice up to six days a week. Hi they spend thousands of dollars on wigs and dresses. This is my rainbow dress. $3,000 per dress per year. All for a chance at the World Championships held this year in Belfast, Ireland. The World Championships is going to be the highest caliber of dancing you're going to see. This year, five American hopefuls are determined to prove that they're the best in the world. We train year-round for like three minutes total of dancing. All of these dancers have the exact same goal. They all want to be the world champion. We spent a fortune to get you here. We worked hard to do this. We only get one chance at this. When you walk on stage, you have to look fabulous. You have to convince the judges that you are the winner. In a competition wrought with injury and emotion. I don't want to be like a brand that cries. Only fate will determine who earns the thrill of victory. Are you saying <laughs> And who suffers the agony of defeat. This is the elite world of competitive Irish dance. There is a buzz about the World Championships. Nothing dead. There'll be over 3,000 dancers attending from all over the world. This is like the Olympics. Nobody wants to be second. Less than 1% of American dancers earn a shot to compete at the World Irish Dance Championships, also known as Worlds. The dancers are practicing all year for two minutes on stage. Everything's up to them. Judging is very subjective. They are looking for foot placement, posture, rhythm, and timing. Dancers are grouped by age and must buy with nearly 200 competitors for their group's top prize, champion. Winning motivates everyone. The top kids in each age group are going to be technically perfect. Any error you make will knock you out of that competition. When you're on stage, it's all business. The world champion is... The World Irish Dance 2012 Championships is in seven days. The pressure is on. My name is Grace, I'm 10 years old, and I'm going to the world for the very first time. First got interested in Irish dance when I went to the river dance, and it was the awesomest thing I had ever seen. His feet were like, I don't even know what to describe them as, like cheetahs. <laughs> I do have a lot of energy. What? Yeah. What? Post. 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 <laughs> they call me the energized bunny, which is a compliment for me because I love bunnies. What are we going to do? To have fun. Right? It doesn't matter what you get. I'm Sheila. I'm Gracie's mom. Gracie has been dancing since she was about five years old. We just put her into dance to learn the jig so she could do it at family parties. <laughs> and I had no idea that we would be at this point now. When my friends come over, they're like, whoa, is that the Stanley Cup? Like, because it's so big. This year at the regionals, I was the champion. I won. These are my big trophies. If I keep getting more awards, I'm probably gonna need a bigger room. In this sport, to be the best, you need to train with the best. My name's Gary Healy. I'm Grace's teacher, and she's gonna be competing in the girls under 11 category. We call him Scary Gary. Up, press up, pull it down, down. Pretty strict. I believe my nickname is Scary Gary. Now, big place. It's too slow. Stop. Straight into it. I just dance is very, very hard. Ten minutes of dance is like, ugh. Dilly dog. No, it's too slow, Grace. No, no, that was terrible. You're dancing with your feet in, not out. Do it again. Do it again now. Double toe, heel, lamp, bang, gas, da 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 da. Grace is a wild card. No. Come on, Grace. At the Worlds, she could make the top 20. <laughs> or she could just have a brain fart. Ooh. I do sometimes have brain farts on stage. Concentrate, Grace. Leading up to the competitions, Gracie has to practice at least five days a week for at least three hours at a time. You know, my job is to protect Grace. Ready? Does she need a sip of water? Grace, would you like a sip of water? 
racist mom Sheila is clueless. I mean, there's a clear line that you don't cross in the class. Faster into that. Let's get a clue faster. My message to the girls at Worlds would be watch out. Good girl. Grace is coming to the competition and she's fiercer than ever. <laughs> Regional champion Grace Wright faces stiff competition from rival Emily Marino, the current national champion. But for Emily, her biggest rival is her older sister, Julia. girls come on we train year-round for like three minutes total of dancing we do it because we want to win I am obsessed with Rocky Balboa in the movie Rocky for training he eats raw eggs I do the same thing wait you really have to do that right for me want some no I can really give you some there's no, a lot I'm, fi I'm fine Julia is crazy for drinking raw eggs oh it's gross got a little drips I am dedicated. <laughs> yes, she is very crazy. Julie, can you go get mom, please? Mom! Mom! Gotta practice! My name's Linda Marino, and I have my two oldest girls both going to Worlds this year. Most people think, oh, Irish dance might be easy. I mean, all you have to do is really put on, like, a wig and some makeup, and then you just go up and dance. Uh-uh. It's a lot harder than that. You have no idea. One, two, ready. Arms back. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Uh, her arms are wet. And okay. Her body's like this. I started doing competitive Irish dancing when I was about three years old. Up, pull it up. Bang. There's a lot of sacrifices for us doing Irish dancing. All of our money is pretty much spent on dresses, wigs. We go to competitions, and that's our vacation for the year. This is our life and wouldn't change it for anything. Both of you guys in the same clip. What are you doing? That's the dance. She did it wrong. No. Since me and Julia are sisters, we are our biggest rivals. Sometimes I want to pop Emily square in the nose. Mom, she's cutting me off. They're very competitive. What's that about? <laughs> she are jealous. Would you do that on stage? Yeah. Is the golden child. Well, I don't like to do anything wrong. I don't do anything wrong either. I just annoy her. Last year, when Julia went to World, she ended up getting 17th in her age group. This year, we're hoping to move up in placement. Emily has been the national champion here for the past three years. She's been extremely successful. We are hoping for her first world. She really has a good shot of making it into the top five. It's hard to breathe when you're trying to concentrate on what you're doing. Oh, your sister does it. Everybody tells me always to look at how Emily is dancing, and that's hard for me to be compared to Emily because she's younger than me, and it's like you always think the older ones are better, but not necessarily. Because my uncle is Michael Flatley, some people do hold me to a high standard. You're going to do it 500 times till you get that right. The World Irish Dance Championships brings together 4,500 of the world's best dancers. For 12-year-old Marina Flatley Griffin, it's a chance to uphold her family's legacy. One, two, three, and go. My name is Marino Flatley Griffin, and I am 12 years old. Stand up tall. Don't roll your eyes at me this time. I'm Tomasina, and I'm Marina's mom. My brother is Michael Flatley. He's an amazing dancer, river dance, and lord of the dance. He's brought Irish dancing on the globe. Go back. The very first move you made, your arm went straight out. Because I was an Irish dancer all my life, I have an advantage over a lot of moms because if they don't know it, they can't help their child at home. Get your butt in. Get your heels up. Arm again. Watch your body. It's shaking. And I don't push her. She pushes herself. I'm not standing or talking to myself. I need you to listen to what I'm saying. And when I say something, I need you to actually correct it at that time. 
When people hear the name Flatley, they do have high expectations. The way you walk onto that stage is how the judge is going to perceive you. You walk on like a champion, he's going to look at you like a champion. You walk on slouching, he's going to look at you like you're a sloucher. Bottom line. Because my uncle is Michael Flatley, some people do hold me to a high standard. Okay, stop. You're going to do it 500 times till you get that right, so you may as well think about it the first time. But I feel that they should judge me by how I dance and not by how my uncle is. My real hope for Marina in the World Championships, please God, come out and be absolutely amazing. You've waited three years to get out there and show everybody what you're able to do at the World Championships. Don't blow the day. Go. Bum, bum, uh, I think bum, bum, in. Come on, Marina. Marina has Four. to live up to her family's name Four. both in and out of the house as coach Gary Healy pushes her to the limit five days a week. Marina comes from a very famous Irish dancing family, so they expect her to be one of the top dancers. My dance teacher, Gary, you know, he can give mean. Bum, Marina, pull it in. No, Marina, you could pull your bum in. He pushes you really hard. I need to be strict with the kids. I get as much as I can out of them. Bum, pull that bum in, Marina. There's sweat, blood, and tears that goes into this. Bum, bum, and toe. Bum, at the tea, pull it back. Bum. Marina has a tendency to let her bottom stick out from behind her. And you have to keep your body straight where that your shoulders are aligned with your hips. Getting towards the end of the step and you're getting tired. No, this is going. Come on, push the hips forward, okay? This is my first time going to Worlds, and I do have a lot of competition. Up, put it down. Good go. Marina's main competition from the United States would be, obviously, Julia O'Rourke. It's going to take a lot of work to beat Julia O'Rourke. She's a really, really good dancer. I beat her. <laughs> finish this set. While Marina must live up to the Flatley name, Julia O'Rourke is competing to reclaim a world championship title. My name is Julia. I am 12 years old. This year is my third time going to Worlds. I've been dancing since I was five years old. I'm Annalyn O'Rourke. I am Julia's mom. Two years ago, Julia won the World Championship. Everybody wants to win. That's the main goal. When you're on the podium, it's just such an amazing feeling. Like, now you're a big shot. <laughs> To be a champion, you need to always stay one step ahead of the competition. And the Petri sisters know how to keep Julia at the top of her game. So dance it! Dance it! I'm Lisa Petri, and I am the co-owner of the Petri School of Irish Dancing. And I'm Karen Petri, and we're sisters. Let's go, people! Pick it up! Hey. At this point, Julia is practicing seven days a week. Pick up! Pick up those clicks! You need so much stamina in Irish dancing because, you know, your feet are moving so fast. It gets tough. When people watch Julia O'Rourke dance, they notice the foot placement. Hard, 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 up. Turning your feet out is extremely important in Irish dancing, and she's capable of executing any move with her feet pretty much almost sideways. Nice. Attitude on stage. Her greatest weakness is bringing her game to the competition. Where's the whole... Now you get to do the whole thing over again. Last year's World Championships, Julia was injured, and she completely sabotaged herself. I broke my foot, and a couple weeks before Worlds, I got my cast off. At Worlds, I came in fifth. If you don't perform your best, you know, you get frustrated in yourself because you've worked so hard, and you could have done better. You've got a week to go. Now is not the time to get nervous and back off of it. You are ready for this. This year's world, I just need to conquer my fears of the stage. Big performance, big stage, big title. Okay? Competitive Irish dance demands sacrifice. And for the Marino family, that means driving three hours a day to and from practice. I am into Irish dancing 1,000%. If I have to choose between dancing and schoolwork, I do have my kids do dancing first. Um, guys, you have your seatbelts on, right? Yes. Can you turn on the radio? No, you guys are doing homework. All you're going to end up doing is singing, and you're not going to get any homework done. Just do what mom says. Right. And it makes life boring. Thank you, Emily. And there is the difference. Julia, if I have to pull over, you're going to be in some serious trouble. Seriously. <laughs> 
up, yep, two, ready, and bang, bang, and do, 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 jump, do, do, jump. We go to Rankin and Tierna Dance School in Buffalo, New York. Emily Marino is an amazing dancer. She learns things quickly, she's fearless, and she will hit the floor like nobody's business. Bang, 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 pull. Those teams are really good. Emily tends to do a lot better in competition. She is very, very focused. Excellent. Julia had always been very confident when she danced, but then she broke her foot, so she tends to play it safe. And that hurts her in competition. One, two, three. Ooh, you all right? Oh my God. Oh no. You all right? You all right? There's nothing worse than an injury. Going into the World Championships. If it hurts, sit down. Do you want to sit? Yeah. All right, we'll sit for a second. No, leave it on, leave it on. Just swing your leg around. Leave it up. If I can't compete at Worlds, like, this will be, like, the end. Like, I just want to, to, like, curl up in a ball and, like, die. I can't believe I just did that. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah, she really just scared herself. Oh, yeah. Julia is definitely afraid of injuring herself again, but we're trying to break her off that. Relax. It just hurts. Yeah. You just caught your baby toe. You didn't, you didn't do anything to the ankle. You're fine. But you're okay. It's going to take some time. Though Julia's ankle will be fine, this minor sprain has dealt a major blow to her confidence. I'm really scared, Mom. I really don't feel like I'm ready. This is your nerves coming up, Jules. When you're down on yourself and you're nervous, it affects how you end up dancing when you're up on stage. I just really want to do good. Coming up, a shocking setback for Marina Flatley Griffin. That sucked. Coming up to the World Irish Dance Championships, dancers jump at any chance to practice their routines in front of an audience. I do love to perform at shows. St. Patrick's Day is my favorite holiday. Well, it's Christmas. Don't put too much on. I mean, are you doing set? Yeah. What's your set again? Jumping. Listen, just because it's St. Patrick's Day doesn't mean you get to get drunk. That's the mother's job. Let me see it. Oh my God. <laughs> Sheila, they do in a show. We're not putting them out on the corner now. Come on. <laughs> Unlike other mothers in the school who eat and breathe this, Sheila's very green, but as Grace has got better, and Sheila's had no other option but to give her 100%. Do we have any Irish in the house? Wait, we don't! At this point, Gracie is number one in the region. Some moms, I think they do get a little bit carried away with that, but that doesn't define us or our family. When you're on stage, it's all business. Marina wants to be at the top of the podium, and she's going for it. My insides are quivering. I'm on my way to Worlds in the car on the way to the airport. I'm just really happy that I get to go to Worlds for the first time. What's going on? Getting on the plane. Well, that's our cue. We are off. We're getting on the plane. I'm scared. Belfast. We're on the plane right now, and this is our view. I've never been to Ireland before. Orlando is probably the farthest I've ever been. That's not really even far. Gracie, a lot of time, has trouble with the jet lag, so she's definitely, you know, going to be a wild card over there. The World Irish Dance Championships are 36 hours away, and our five American hopefuls are in Belfast, Ireland. The world's competition is so tough, that's all you prepare for the whole year. Each age group carries a world championship title, but for decades, Irish and British dancers have shut Americans out of the top spots. Americans rock. They don't stink like everybody else thinks we do. Like, we're good. When you walk on stage, you have to look fabulous. You have to have bunch of makeup on. You have to have the crown. You have to have the rhinestone dress. And I usually get spray tans, but I have no idea why, because Irish people are pale. If you want to stand out on stage, then you need a custom dress made by famed Irish designer Gavin Doherty. But if you want a Gavin dress, it'll cost you. 
A really nice dress is $2,500. Now I'm in Ireland and it's getting a little more real. And it's here to see my dress for the first time. I kind of leave it up to Gavin. He can make it look really good or he can make it look bad if he wants. So I'm a little nervous. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> it's so sparkly. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's awesome. I love the dress. The shawl on the back has a little globe on it, and that's because two years ago I won the world, and it's just like a symbol, like saying I won the world, and I'm proud of it. The big day is finally here. By sundown, champions will be made and hearts broken. You look like a fool, Gracie. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> for worlds, everything is bigger. So Gary wants me to wear two wigs, but for this tiny head, it was like, whoa. And a lot, a lot of bobby pins. We could just like staple it on. How's that, Gracie? Yeah. We just get a staple, gonna staple it to your head. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Grace is a very nice little tiny dancer with great feet and great style. But Grace is liable to get up on stage and do anything. You're gonna be good today? Yeah. Good. <laughs> she could go up there and do extremely well. Or she could just go up there and forget her steps and just stop in the middle of it all. Gracie, are you ready? Pose. <laughs> Ooh, glitter. Glitter, glitter, glitter. I love glitter. No brain farts out there today. I promise. Can you promise me? Glitter, glitter, glitter. Sisters Julia and Emily Marino are competing on the same day, so their dances will overlap. I'm not going to be able to watch both daughters compete at the same time. So I'm left with the choice of who am I going to watch? Emily, she just goes up and she does her thing. Julia is always looking for her mom. So I'm going to have to go with Julia. And Emily will be just fine on her own. Oh, Em, you got to wake up, babe. Yeah. She's more awake than you, but you're going that first. Until way later. Stop, Mom. What? Oh, see, now she's mad at me. <laughs> I'm not allowed to speak in the morning's P.S. You're the full-on grouch, right? I definitely overreact if my mom isn't there to see me, and that kind of makes me mad. She's like, why did Mom have to watch you? No, I'm not. I'm nice to you. No, you're not. Let's go dance. It's my first world, and I'm nervous about my main competitors, like Grace. She's really good and really relaxed. It's stressful having one on the dance day. It's ridiculous having two. See you in the hall when I left. We had to see Julia, too. The World Championships draw a crowd of over 15,000 spectators to watch Irish dancers at the pinnacle of their sport. I'm Terry Gillen, and I'm the chairperson of the World Championships here in Belfast. Dancers perform on two stages. The large stage is host to the first two rounds. The first dance will be a hard shoe dance, like a tap shoe. The second dance I do is a soft shoe dance, which is more like a ballet slipper. Everybody will dance to the same music, but everybody will do different steps. Traffic occurs when dancers' performances overlap. It's like three of you fighting for stage space. If you land in the top 50 in your age group after the first two dances, then you'll be recalled for the final round with a shot at the top prizes. Any error you make in the first round or the second round will knock you out of that top 50. So if they fall, they're done. You're here in Belfast. You can't have anything go wrong. Should I go? Well, let's go. First up in the girls' 10 to 11 category is Grace Wright. Grace is competing against Emily Marino, who is number one in the U.S. and a real contender for the championship title. I'm just worried now that she's getting too relaxed. She's not thinking. You know, if Grace holds it together, she could do great. But she's quite liable to forget her steps and not recall. Here we go. My worst fear for Grace is that she's going to mess up because she's not always consistent. She forgets the step in her mind and then she messes up.
No mistakes. Thank God. No mistakes. When I was just about to walk on, I had like butterflies in my stomach and stuff. And then um, when I went on stage, it was just like, I don't remember any of it now. Good job, Chrissy. Thanks. <laughs> Having remembered all of her steps from the first round, Grace can breathe a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, for 10-year-old Emily Marino, it's time to show everyone what she's capable of. Hi, Em. Come on up there. Hi. When I'm watching my girls dance, I get nervous for them. I'm always hoping they don't run into traffic. I just want them to go out and give it everything that they have. Yeah, she's a great aunt. Oh, jeez. When you're on stage, you don't want to run into another dancer. That's something that the judges are going to notice, and that's bad. You can go anywhere without someone being on top of her. It's really hard for me to say right now how Emily will end up doing. I'm going to keep our fingers crossed, to say a lot of prayers, and hope for the best. Emily must complete round two before she learns if the bump will cost her a recall and her shot at the podium. In the girls 12 to 13 category, Marina Flatley Griffin is about to hit the stage. To live up to her Flatley name, Marina will need to dance harder than she ever has before. Here's the deal. Look at me. Remember what I told you. You've worked hard. This is your day. You're lucky to be here. We spent a fortune to get you here. We worked hard to do this. We only get one chance at this. You're going to miss out. You're not going to miss out. When you're waiting for your turn in your side stage, some girls do get really, really nervous where they puke all over the stage. She looks like she's going to puke. Not a pretty sight. The girls get very anxious, they get very nervous, and quite often you're gonna see girls vomiting on stage. I usually just breathe in and breathe out, and I just tell myself that everything's gonna be okay, because the more you freak yourself out, the worse you're gonna do. All right, we're on. <laughs> if Marina has a good day, I think she could quite easily slip into the top 10. The collision could ruin Marina's chances of recalling if the judges deduct enough points from her score. As a teacher, if things go wrong on stage, obviously we feel the pain for the student that you just realize what could have been is no longer. <gasps> After a shocking collision, the judges ring the bell and stop Marina's dance. Now the judges decide how many points to deduct before the dancers start over. If you bump into somebody, one judge might see it and might think it was intentional and they might be a severe deduction where she could not recall. So you don't think she was just like murder? No, there was interpretation. Right. And my interpretation is that she felt she doesn't do that. If there's so much action happening, if you see somebody coming towards you, get out of the way, be polite. That's just the proper way to do it. I mean, she would never do that. She's not like that. Facing possible elimination, Marina takes to the stage for a shot at redemption. Come on, girl. Good girl. <laughs> yeah! Nice. Good job. Well, the 
this has never really happened to me before. I went to go turn, and I thought the girl was farther behind me, but she's like directly behind me. She kicked me right in my knee and had like a little bit of a bruise. It's really like nerve wracking. For round two, the girls slip into their soft shoes for the most athletic performance of the day. The second round, the judges will look at how high you can dance on the tips of your toes, how high you can jump, the looseness of your ankles. Just perfection from, you know, head to toe. With the first two rounds complete, the judges will recall the 50 best dancers to perform the final dance. Only those who recall will have a shot at being champion. We now have the recalls for the girls 10 to 11 years. One, five, nine. One, nine, nine. Two, zero, six. I feel awesome because I got a recall. It's the world championships. One six zero. One eight zero. Yes. I just found out I recalled. It's like awesome. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I love you so much. With all five girls recalled, each will perform their final dance in front of the judges to determine who will be champion. In the girls 12 to 13 category, Julia O'Rourke has been recalled and is looking to regain the championship title. Once you have actually won the world championships, like Julia, you are always defending that title. We are very hopeful that this is her comeback year. Everything you have to live. Everything you have. Everybody wants to win. That's the main goal. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. With both daughters recalled and heading into their final round, Linda Marino focuses on coaching Emily, the national champion. Just keep your feet. I'm not going to keep your feet. Let's get your toes curled. Meanwhile, big sis Julia must fend for herself. My mom's opinion is really important to me. I definitely overreact if my mom isn't there to see me. I, like, start freaking out. It's stressful having one on the dance day. It's ridiculous having two. So I run, 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 run. I hear comments like, Emily's the one that won nationals four times, and Julia's the one that broke her foot. It's really not a good feeling. But again, our days are better than our 105. Yeah, I was happy with that. Julia surprised the heck out of me. I think this could be Julia's time right now, which would be well-deserved. Julia's worked incredibly hard. What do you think? I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. <laughs> I feel really good that I've completed everything. I feel like kind of like a weight is lifted off my shoulders now. I think I'll be happy no matter what because I know that I danced my best. I got it. Julia can take a sigh of relief, but the heat is still on for Linda's other daughter, Emily, the national champion and a real contender for a top five finish. This is Emily's first time at Worlds. She's about to perform the biggest dance of her life, and her mom's not there. Emily's my rock. She's solid. She just goes up and she does her thing. Even if she is nervous, she doesn't let anything get to her.
this was a very unusual occurrence for Emily. She didn't knock it out of the park like she normally tends to do. surprised at how I did, so I'm like a little bit disappointed in myself. I tried so hard, but it wasn't what you wanted. she was looking for more of an oh my gosh Emily that was just amazing and she didn't get that and I think that really got to her I see you in the hall when I left I'm sorry we had to see Julia too I saw my scar and I felt my heart drop I think I deserved a little bit better I'm sorry Irish Dance Championships are wrapping up. All that remains are the final rankings. When it comes down to the result, I really want to stand out. The top 20 dancers will take home medals and qualify for next year's Worlds. For all of the dancers, a huge goal is to make the podium, and the podium is the top five dancers. But those who don't land in the top 20 will return home empty-handed. The result... Girls 10 and under 11. In the age 10 to 11 category, Grace Wright hopes to bring home her first world medal, while national champion Emily Marino is expecting the worst after a disappointing final round. 8, 2, 21. And 9, place, 1, 8, in the world and it feels awesome right now. Are you so <laughs> the minute I heard my number called, I started crying. And I never cry in competitions. In sixth place, 206, Emily Marino. Despite faltering in her final round, the judges still gave Emily enough points to put her in sixth place. I was one place off from the world championships podium, but next year I'm going to get it. Are you excited? Yeah. I love it when Emily does well because it's like, I don't even know, like it makes me really happy and she deserves it. This swag has been on my head for how many hours? 13. <laughs> Uh, maybe 12, 12, 13. 12 hours, and it's killing me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have had an error in our first result. Please don't be panicking. In a shocking turn of events, a computer glitch has corrupted the judges' scores. The computer glitch affected the ranking of four or five of the girls, one of them being Grace. In 14 place, competitor from 1 in 0, which right. Grace went from 9th to 14th. I was sad when Gary told me, but then I graceified it, and I was better. We have the results. With little sister Emily finishing in 6th place, the bar has been set high for Julia Marino. Julia shocked me. Julia may come out and shine a lot today. Really excited about that. Number 239. Number 105. Despite giving the best performance of her life, the judges ranked Julia 37th. I saw my score and I knew it wasn't good. I kind of felt my heart kind of like drop because I thought I danced good and I, I don't think I can do anymore. I did my very best and I think I deserved a little bit better. Sorry. I don't want to be like a brat that cries. My mom thought that I danced really good and she doesn't really care about the result because she knows that I danced my best. My sister thought I danced really good too. Both my girls are very, very good dancers. I'm very proud of them and that's what makes champions. This is 
relationship 12 to 13 years. The judges are about to reveal if Marina Flatley Griffin and Julie O'Rourke will be headed to the podium. 15 years with Gianna Cheeseman, Prosper for the Atlantic region. Fourteenth place, Marina Sadi Griffin. Marina made quite the comeback, earning a world medal and living up to the Flatley name. I wasn't expecting to get so high. I thought maybe like twenties or something like that, but to get fourteenth, it was really awesome. Marina. It's been two years since Julie O'Rourke's World Championship, and this is her shot to reclaim the title. To get on the podium, you know, I'll be so happy. I know I danced my best. And fourth place, Julie O'Rourke, Tepe, Mid Atlantic region. Julia's hard work lands her fourth in the world. Sometimes, you know, if it didn't come out the way you wanted it to come out, you get frustrated in yourself. But at the end of the day, if you just danced your best, you've already won. Even though I got fourth, that's the top American, and it's just a great feeling to get up there. <laughs> But you need all these little girls came over and they asked me for my autograph. It's so cute because I'm kind of like their superstar. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not used to being like a star. Just Julia. You like me? With the 2012 World Irish Dance Championships coming to a close, the girls are already preparing for next year's competition when the championships come to Boston.